I suppose it would be a fair enough question to say, where are we now? Well, let's check this out first. The term Ice Age gets thrown around a lot, I think mostly incorrectly. You may very well have seen that animated feature movie called Ice Age. And that was sort of a reference to the Pleistocene epoch. But an Ice Age in reality is this. Ice ages occur any time the majority of glaciers on the planet advance. That means they move forward. And there's a net increase in glacial ice on the surface of the planet. And that means that less land is exposed to the atmosphere because it's buried beneath glacial ice. An interglacial, now I put period in parentheses because of the geologic time scale. It's not a technical geologic time scale period, but I like interglacial in my mind to be modifying something, so it's going to modify that, period. So an interglacial or an inter interglacial period means this. This occurs when the majority of glaciers on Earth are retreating, they're receding. That means that there's a net decrease in glacial ice and more land is being exposed because the glacial ice is disappearing. Which of these two are we in right now? Right, well, we're in an interglacial period, of course, because the majority of glaciers are going away, they're receding, they're disappearing. That doesn't mean that there are no glaciers whatsoever that are advancing. I know there's at least one or two in Alaska that are. I think there's at least one in the southern part of South America that is. But the vast majority of them are not. The vast majority of glaciers are retreating. So we are in an interglacial period. And to keep with what an ice age is, during the Pleistocene epoch, there were many of them as the glaciers expanded out and then retreated and then expanded out and retreated. And in fact, since the end of the Pleistocene epoch, there have been multiples of these when I was in Iceland, I learned, you know, there's big glaciers in Iceland, that the glaciers in Iceland actually are from 3,000 years ago. They are not remnant glaciers from the Pleistocene, the way much of the glacial ice in Antarctica or Greenland is remnant from the Pleistocene. Those glaciers are only 3,000 years old in Iceland, so they're from a more recent ice age. During the Renaissance, there was an ice age, and I think since then there's been a couple more. So they can be, you know, decades or centuries or millennia. It's just a period of time where what I just described happens, which is the majority of glaciers on the planet are expanding, okay? Do you remember what base level was? Base level is the lowest level to which a stream can erode, and global base level is sea level. Well, remember, all rivers are attempting to reach base level, sea level, okay? During the greatest glacial advance, let's say 50,000 years ago, about 30% of the land area of this planet was covered in glacial ice. Today, about 10% of the land area is covered in glacial ice, and that is overwhelmingly in two places, Antarctica and Greenland. Very good, okay? Well, in order for all of this glacial ice to be on the planet during the greatest glacial advance, which in some cases, like for example in Canada, was almost two miles deep. In fact, where I used to live in Illinois for one godforsaken year, uh, the place where I lived had 5,000 feet of glacial ice over the top of it 40,000 years ago. So it's a mile of glacial ice, and all of that's gone now. In order to have made all of that glacial ice, that would have had to have come from snow, from storms that were coming in off the ocean, okay? That means that in order to make all that glacial ice on land, the water had to come out of the ocean, which caused sea level to be lower. Most people think that sea level during the Pleistocene Epoch at the greatest glacial advance was something between four and 500 feet lower than it is today. That's 400 to 500 feet. Let's split the baby in half and say 450 feet. If sea level is 450 feet lower, what is that going to do to base level? It's going to drop base level 450 feet, which means the river systems would be able to carve 450 feet deeper into the landscape the slope would be steeper, which would increase velocity, which would increase erosion. And in fact, imagine as those glaciers were melting, all this water pouring across the landscape, which would be increased discharge along with increased velocity. Well, there are on the planet landforms or remnant landforms 
that indicate exactly this scenario, that during the greatest glacial advance, sea level and base level were lower, which allowed river systems to cut deeper into the planet. Take a look at Chesapeake Bay. Chesapeake Bay is right there. There's Chesapeake Bay, which is where Virginia, Delaware, and Maryland all come together. Now, take a look over at the dendrite extreme pattern on the right-hand side. Can you see how Chesapeake Bay resembles a dendritic stream pattern? That's because that is exactly what it is. When sea level was 450 feet lower, the rivers that were flowing off the continent in that area were able to carve a 450 foot deep canyon, a dendritic canyon. And then as sea level rose, what's happened is the water has come in and filled in Chesapeake Bay. Now, that's on the east coast of the United States. We have something on the west coast also. San Francisco Bay is formed the same way. Most of San Francisco Bay is not very deep. In fact, the southern part of San Francisco Bay is only something in the neighborhood of six feet deep in some places. Very shallow, you can almost walk across it. And the deepest part tends to be about where the Golden Gate Bridge is at. So we're going from San Francisco into Marin County, crossing over that opening, the Golden Gate, as it's called. But that is only 250 to 300 feet deep. And what happened is as sea level went up, it filled in that whole area there where you see San Francisco Bay, much of which was grasslands during the Pleistocene where, get this, giant sloths and mastodons and saber-toothed cats would have been wandering around at one point. So if we melted all of the glacial ice that's on the planet today, and that would not happen in your lifetime, okay? That's not going to happen. We're melting ice, and sea level is probably going to go up by one and a half to eight feet by 2100. But it's not going to melt at all. We'd probably have to be hit by a massive meteorite in, in Antarctica in order for that to happen. But if we were able to melt all the glacial ice on the planet, sea level would rise by about 200 feet. You can see what that would do to California. Take a look at California on the right-hand side as it is today. Now look at California on the left-hand side. No more glaciers left. You know, the Central Valley, the Sa Sacramento and San Joaquin Valleys, basically gone. Fresno, gone. Sacramento, gone. Stockton, gone. Modesto, gone. You know, even right up to or almost at Bakersfield. San Francisco Bay, significantly bigger. You know, Cape Mendocino, Where'd it go? L.A. Basin. What happened to you, L.A. Basin? You're gone, completely below water. Yeah, that's what would happen. And notice where Salton Sea is at and, you know, the Imperial Valley where Coachella goes down. Notice that the water would come all the way from the Sea of Cortez and fill that whole area in. It would all be below water. More of the story for you, don't buy a house right at sea level. If you're going to buy a house, buy it up on a cliff. But don't buy it right at sea level.